Pauline Salazar. I'm 16 years old and I attend yes public yes public schools. Pauline, when you first heard about sacred geometry, what what went through your mind? Religion, I guess religion, and a lot of shapes I'm assuming because it was geometry. Mm -hmm. So I guess and um like old I guess sacred reminds me of an old word like back then. And now that you've actually had an opportunity, a couple opportunities to work on some drawings, how do you feel about it? It's pretty. A lot of shapes. A lot of concentration, concentration, and precision. I guess, yeah. Do you find it difficult? Challenging. In a good way. In a good way. Exciting. Like something new. How different is this approach from what you experienced in geometry at school? I guess it's more visual, and it shows you like a different angle to it, rather than just numbers and a bunch of rules and stuff. So what if um, what if geometry in school is taught this way? How do you think students would uh, <laughs> accept or uh, approach uh, math and geometry in school? They'd probably be more anxious, more exciting, since it's like different, and it's also it keeps your attention. It's not just numbers and numbers. It's like you actually figure it out and discover it rather than someone tells you, you know, like the Pythagorean theorem. Instead of someone telling you it's a squared, b squared, c squared, you can like see within the shapes that, you know, it's like figuring out yourself. It's more, you get it faster. How different was today's experience from last week? Um, I guess we built Tom, what we learned last time, so it was more easier, and we like figured the steps out more faster, like it clicked on easier, and we just like, yeah, went from there. So with, um, with the designs that you've been able to create, um, how has it made you think differently about math and geometry? Or has it? Oh, okay. It gets, it does get difficult. Like once you start doing more than just eight or twelve squares, once you start doing more than that, it's like whoa. Do you see how this relates to things outside of, say, the math world? And can you make this connection in that world? Like the flower and the apple within the shape. I guess the different patterns it has, and how it's like not just in math but also in nature. How the shapes are out there too, but you just have to look harder, I guess. Did you find yourself this week um, observing patterns that you probably saw all the time, but now they stood out more so to you? Can you give an example of one of those experiences? Well, like in tiles too, right? Like in my kitchen, different tiles and stuff, and how like the patterns, yeah, the patterns and like how they fit, and like yeah, trees, grass. Bricks too. And now you see how you could create those patterns. Anything else you'd like to share? What's this experience been like for you? Fun. Fun? <laughs> Why? What, what's fun about it? Fun. What aspects? How you can make so many shapes out of one little compass as well. How like just from a circle you can go, you can build onto it. And overall from the last project to where we are today, uh, when you first came through these doors, uh, how differently do you feel about your ability as an artist? I can do more with my material. I can build on it, I yeah, build on it again. It's not just a simple little pin work now. You can make different things and do different things with that. And I can do more, way more. <laughs> How differently do you think uh, your generation would be if more of them was exposed to these type of art practices? How different? I guess there'd be more designs and stuff. There'd be there'd be like more out there than just like in nature. There'd also be like more I guess the designs in different buildings too. Like right now you don't really see like these in other than churches and stuff, really. Or I don't. But I guess it'd be more exposed. More exposed. <laughs>